and welcome to Sci-Fi Minecart. The film we're going to have a look at today is considered to be, by many, one of the worst films ever made. But personally, I'm quite fond of it. The film is none other than the fantastically named Plan 9 from Outer Space. from Outer Space is a 1959 sci-fi horror independent film which is, as I said, often referred to as the worst film ever made. However, it's also often given the epithet of so bad it's good, a term which I've never really agreed with. You see, I'm not some pompous art critic writing for a failing newspaper whose arrogant self-entitled readers are simply intent to hungrily lap up my poorly conceived criticism based entirely on arbitrarily chosen and wholly non-existent guidelines of artistic merit. I am simply a humble movie enthusiast. What this means in the long run is that while I may point out bad graphics or bad acting or even storylines that make no sense, what I'm mainly here to tell you is if a movie is enjoyable and therefore worth watching. Because in the end, all I care about is whether a movie is enjoyable. If I enjoy a film, then I consider it to be a good film. Because when I watch a film, all I'm looking to do is enjoy myself. Therefore, I consider the term so bad it's good to be, well, basically a contradiction in terms. If a film is good, then it simply can't be so bad. So, a film cannot really be so bad that it's good, because a film that is so bad that it's good is simply good. However, I will rather begrudgingly continue to use the term because it conjures an image that everyone understands. If you say a film is so bad that it's good, it means that despite the film's constant failings, or rather often because of the film's constant failings, it becomes enjoyable in a way. Basically, in my experience, a film that is considered to be so bad it's good has acting, graphics, or storyline that are so ridiculously over-the-top and terrible that they add to the enjoyment of the film because it becomes impossible to take the film seriously, and therefore you can't take the film seriously, and therefore you just have to sit back and have fun with it. And, well, Plan 9 from Outer Space most certainly fits into this category. So let's get started. Firstly, the storyline. The storyline is so overly convoluted that even having watched the film several times, I'm still not entirely certain I've got it. To break it down to easily digestible bite-sized pieces, in order to prevent humans from using a weapon that explodes sunlight which the humans didn't know about until the aliens came to Earth to tell them that they were preventing them from ever discovering it and using it. So to begin with, it sort of has the classic aliens are here to stop humans before they become too powerful a threat in the galaxy storyline, however there's more to it. The aliens, it seems, have apparently been communicating with the government for a while to try to tell them not to use the weapon that they don't have and didn't know about until they were told not to use it, but the government has continued to not talk to them and refuse to admit that aliens existed. To make it indisputably obvious that aliens exist, the aliens begin to attack and buzz around and make their presence very much well known. However, despite it being printed all in the newspapers, the government simply dismisses it as a training exercise, which is obviously accepted because that's the last we hear of it. So all of this sort of makes sense so far, but the aliens later in the movie make mention that they don't want to be discovered, so I guess they changed their mind, or possibly the scriptwriters forgot what they were doing. Either way, for most of it, the aliens want humans to know they exist except for when they don't. Both because the human government refuses to admit aliens exist, but also to keep the existence of aliens unknown, the aliens conceive of a plan to destroy humanity through the use of zombies. That particular plan is the ninth one, which comes from outer space, which is where the movie got the title from. And yes, you guessed it. This of course means that the film not only has alien spaceships, but also zombies. So it's already a great film. Now that we've got the plot mostly out of the way, let's move on to the visuals of this film, which are absolutely fantastic in their own terrible way. The alien spaceships are your classic flying saucer looking vehicles that a man in a pub that smells like urine is likely to tell you about in great length. They are so clearly models hanging from string that the first one we see, you can actually see the string. The image of the outstandingly fake alien spaceship juxtaposed against the stock footage of the real life aeroplane that spots them and the way that the actors play this encounter so straight is just absolutely hilarious. I laughed my butt off. The use of obviously real stock footage alongside of obviously fake visual effects continues throughout the entirety of the movie, and it becomes more and more funny as it continues to happen. 
It is Plan 9 from Outer Space's use of stock footage versus bad visual effects that I pointed out Lobster Man from Mars was parodying. But the thing is, to parody it, all Lobster Man from Mars had to do was to do exactly what Plan 9 from Outer Space had already done. And therefore, in Plan 9 from Outer Space, it's just as funny. All of this use of stock footage versus visual effects culminates in the brilliant scene where the military is firing at the alien spaceships, and the general that is commanding the military is clearly being filmed in front of a bedsheet. I really do find it impossible to believe that anyone can actually watch this film and not find it a little bit charming and a lot hilarious. The aliens themselves in this film look like they've been ripped straight out of a Buck Rogers serial. They're dressed up as your classic spacemen and have their classic ray guns. The low budget visual effects for the spaceship and the classic look for the aliens are made even more funny when put in contrast with the zombies in the film. The zombies in the film are in my opinion a little bit spooky. And I do in fact say that unironically. I found them to be genuinely unsettling. Throughout the film there are really only three zombies, or at least I can only think of there being three, so only three of them left an impact. The only one of these three zombies that has a name is Inspector Daniel Clay's zombie, who is a giant. Throughout the entirety of his being a zombie, the actor portraying him manages to distort his face to look absolutely horrifying. The second zombie, who is actually the first zombie and simply the second zombie I'm talking about, is simply referred to as Old Lady, who is the wife of the character simply referred to as Old Man. Of the three zombies in the film, she is the one that I find most unsettling. She has these really, really long fingernails and she walks extremely unnaturally. I found her entire performance to be quite spooky and I think the character could have done well as a genuine ghoul in a genuine horror film. And the third and final zombie is sort of Bella Lugosi. And I say sort of Bella Lugosi because it's only partly Bella Lugosi because it's not always Bella Lugosi. You see, Plan 9 from Outer Space is the last film released featuring Bella Lugosi, although the footage of Bella Lugosi in Plan 9 from Outer Space is supposedly test footage shot earlier than Plan 9 from Outer Space's conception. Because Bella Lugosi unfortunately died before the film was actually released, or even was started to be made aside from the footage of him in the film, they had to get a double to play Bella Lugosi in any of the scenes that really tied his scenes to the film. This means that when you're watching the film, any scene where you can see Bella Lugosi's face is Bella Lugosi, but any scene where Bella Lugosi's face is covered up by a cape is not in fact Bella Lugosi. Therefore, the zombie slash character old man that is played by Bella Lugosi is only sort of Bella Lugosi. But I'm getting rather off track with this history lesson, let's get back to the review. Pretty much every scene with the zombies involved is actually genuinely spooky and rather atmospheric. This means that any of the scenes with the other characters and any scenes with aliens is comically over the top and out of place and therefore thoroughly enjoyable and funny. So now that we've got the storyline and graphics out of the way, let's talk about the acting. The acting in this film is a wonderful combination of over the top, playing it straight and downright ludicrous. And the dialogue backs up this acting with scenes that play out like soap operas, scenes that play out like comedies and scenes that play out like horror. As the film has scenes that are played out with absolute sincerity and only seconds later turn to absolute ludicrousy, it's hard to believe that the director wasn't taking the piss with this film. With its fantastic mixture of horror and comedy elements, it has a very similar vibe to later films that purposely combine these elements such as Shaun of the Dead. Whether it was supposed to actually be a comedy, I can't say for certain and we can't simply ask the director because Edward has been dead for quite a few years now, but the real question is does it matter? And I think not. The film is enjoyable and the film is funny and whether or not it was meant to be so is completely irrelevant to the fact. Art is interpretation and I personally interpreted the film as a sci-fi horror comedy and I enjoyed it thoroughly as such. I do find it hard to believe though that the director wasn't trying to make the film at least a little bit funny. I mean it starts off with this. Greetings my friend. We are all interested in the future for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And there's no way you can convince me that someone trying to make a genuine sci-fi horror film would choose a narrator that sounded and spoke like this to introduce your film. That intro gets me in the mood to laugh, not in the mood to be scared. And we also have the use of some humorous sound effects, for instance the car crash used in this off-screen death. The old man left that home, never to return again. But as I said, intention is wholly irrelevant. Plan 9 from Outer Space, whether it was meant to be or not, is a cheesy, over the top and sometimes genuinely atmospheric sci-fi horror film that is absolutely hilarious and thoroughly enjoyable. 
As far as worst films ever made go, I found this film to be genuinely enjoyable to the point that I enjoyed it more than some films that have received critical acclaim, and I highly recommend it. But as I said, film is art, and all art is entirely subjective. So my opinion of Plan 9 from Outer Space is worth as much as any other reviewer, even the pompous newspaper critics. So go and watch it yourself, and form your own opinion. If you're like me, you'll probably enjoy it. And if you're not like me, you'll have something to complain about, which is never a bad thing. Oh, and by the way, Skeleton Gun. Thanks for watching. I have been and still am Grim Grindle.